Deepcool has released a bunch of new all-in-one liquid coolers and we've had a stack of requests with people asking, how do you install these? So let's show you how to install the brand new Deepcool LT520 and LT720 in both Intel and AMD based desktop systems. Let's do an install guide thing. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review of these coolers. Every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different. So make sure you do a little bit of research to see what will fit in your case before buying any parts for any PC builds that you do. This guide was designed to give you the fundamental idea of how to install both of these deep cool coolers. However, we're only gonna be showing how to install one, but this does apply to both. Let's answer some questions that you might have. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A. This case was chosen basically because it's really easy for us to film with. These parts were chosen for demonstration purposes only. And this video, again, is not a review of this cooler. It's just to show you how to install it to make your life easier if you're having trouble with installing this. Yes, this will work with almost every Intel and AMD CPU combo and the motherboard combos you're probably gonna ask about in the comments down below from probably the last 13 years into the foreseeable future. Yeah, the fan placement in this video is mostly correct. Depends on your case and the clearances of your case. And yes, this cooler does come with these fans, but they don't have RGB fans. We often get questions uh, from people saying, hey, my fans aren't lighting up. Most of the time it's just because the fans included aren't RGB fans. And that's actually quite common, more common than you think. Yes, your motherboard does actually require RGB to use the lighting on the cooler itself, but you can then put any fans that you want on this cooler if that's what you wanna do. But make sure you do your research first because you might accidentally buy the wrong size. Now, this is really for people who aren't as versed as people like me or some other people out there who know exactly what to do when they get a new cooler. But again, everything that you're seeing in this video is included in the box for installation, except all the PC hardware. Now this will work with all your motherboard RGB software, but it does require a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. Anything else, it's just not gonna work and you don't really wanna damage the lighting trying to make it work. Yeah, the thermal paste is pre-applied. However, if you need to reinstall this cooler at any point in time, you're gonna need some more thermal paste. You don't need to fill up the cooler before use. You don't need to change the liquid. You don't need to do anything in regards to the cooling system at all. Install it and you're good to go. All right, let's take a look at what's in the box with the LT520. Let's uh, pull it all out and take a bit of a closer look. First up, we've got all the mounting hardware, the back plate, the cables, and the documentation that you're gonna need to get started, but obviously documentation we're not using. There's two included PWM fans with the cooler as well, and these fans do not have RGB. There's also the cooler itself, and with this cooler, you'll also notice that the pump top is completely removable. It's attached with magnets. There's also pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't need to use any thermal paste. There's the Intel backplate. This is for mounting with any Intel motherboard from the past 13 or so years, so you should be good to go if that's the case. There's also the Intel mounting brackets that are required for all Intel installations. There's AMD mounting brackets that actually supports Threadripper, but we're not covering that. There's a PWM fan splitter as well as an inline fan resistor if you want to slow the fans down without fan speed control. But let's take a look at the Intel specific installation instructions. This is all of the required mounting gear that we're going to need to install this on any Intel based motherboard. First up, we want to adjust the backplate for your socket type. So the inner size is LGA 11.5X and LGA 1200, and the outer size is LGA 1700, which is what we're actually gonna be using in this video. I would recommend lowering your motherboard onto the backplate if the motherboard is outside of your case. This just makes it a little bit easier to align when installing. There are multiple spaces that come with this cooler. They have labels on them for whichever socket type you want to use. So we'll be using these spaces for the LGA 1700 socket type. Now what you want to do is basically just lower the spaces onto the bolts that we pass through with the backplate in the previous step and rinse and repeat that until it's done. Next we want to locate the Intel mounting brackets. This is again for all Intel installations. Locate four of the mounting screws and then you'll want to remove the pump top from the top of the pump on the cooler itself. 
This just makes it a little bit easier to install the brackets, remove the cold plate cover, making sure that you don't touch any of the thermal paste. It's magnetic, so it actually makes it easy to align and it actually helps the brackets not fall off while you're mounting the screws in. And fasten both of these brackets up, but be sure not to over tighten anything here. And when you're done, it should look a little something like this. This is all of the required mounting hardware that you will need for an AIM-4 slash AIM-5 solution. The difference being with AIM-4 and AIM-5 is AIM-5's got a permanently attached backplate and AIM-4 doesn't, but all of these steps are the same. Now what you want to do is remove the factory mounting hardware that comes on your AIM-4 or AIM-5 motherboard. Make sure you don't throw out this mounting hardware in case you want to change your cooler at a later date. I see lots of people asking where to buy these, but if you don't throw them out, then you don't have that problem. <laughs> okay, you want to locate the mounting bolts for AIM-4 slash AIM-5 installation. There are four of these in total, and you'll just want to finger tighten all of the mounting bolts into the back plate, making sure that you don't over tighten these because it might make it pretty hard to remove at a later stage if you're changing your cooler at any point in time. Locate the AMD mounting brackets. This is for AIM-4, AIM-5, and Threadripper, but we're not covering Threadripper here. Locate the four mounting screws that are required and pull the pump top off the top of the pump. This makes it much easier to install the brackets. Remove the cold plate cover, making sure that you don't touch any of the thermal paste. Otherwise, you'll need to buy some more thermal paste. Align the mounting brackets on the bottom. This is magnetic, so they shouldn't move around and fasten all four screws in. Do not over tighten these, just do them in just enough so the bracket doesn't fall away. And if everything went to plan, it should look a little something like this. You'll want to locate the fan screws that come with the cooler. There are eight of these with this cooler specifically. You'll want to place the radiator inside the case. This is gonna be different depending on your case your fitment, the CPU type, the motherboard, just lots of different factors, but this is just to give you an understanding of how this mounts up. You'll then want to put the fan screw through the holes in the fan frames and fasten the fan to the radiator. This is the correct way for the Fantex P400A that we're using in this video, and you'll want to rinse and repeat that process until all of the screws are installed, and this applies for both the 520 and 720. To make your life a little bit easier, pass the fan cables through to the back for easy cable management later. Locate four of these nuts. <laughs> It gets me every single time. And what we're going to do then is lower the cooler onto the IHS of your CPU. And as you can see here for both AMD and Intel CPUs, it is the same process. Make sure that you do not over tighten these, otherwise you'll be in for a bad time. And double check that everything is tight once you're finished lowering the cooler onto the IHS of your CPU. Locate the fan cable from the pump top. This is required. This has to be plugged in in order for this to work. You'll then want to locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU opt or water pump or anything like that. And you want to plug that cable into that header. You'll then want to locate the PWM fan splitter and then locate a header on your motherboard labeled something like CPU fan or something similar, and then plug the PWM splitter into the desired header on your motherboard. You'll then want to pass that PWM splitter through to the back of your system to make your life easier, and put the pump top back onto the top of the cooler. Then you'll notice there's a three pin five volt addressable RGB cable. Locate a three pin five volt addressable RGB header on your motherboard, then plug that into that header on the motherboard and it only plugs in one way. So it's very difficult to mess that up. On the back side, locate and plug in the remaining PWM fan cables to make the fan spin. If you don't plug these in, it won't work. An optional step here is you can plug in those inline resistors to slow the fan speed down so you don't have to adjust the fan speed later. This makes your system quiet and every, everything went to plan. You should look a little something like this.
covered pretty much everything that you're gonna to need to know in this video. And if you've got any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord or drop a comment down below. If you like this video and it helped you, let us know and give us a like and subscribe or consider supporting us by clicking the join button to get all the music that I make for the channel or get early access to videos like this one over on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek, and I truly hope this video helped you because that's exactly why you're here watching it, right? You had a little bit of trouble and I'm here to bail you out and help you out. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you all so much.